Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 13th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Anthony Egan. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. Today on this 13th Sunday of the Church's year, we gather together, knowing that we are sinners yet loved by God. And so we have the courage to ask God for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God, and to you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that, that I have greatly sinned, sinned in my, my thoughts and in my words, in what, what I have done, done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And on and earth, peace to people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. One day Elisha went on to Shunem, where a wealthy woman lived, who urged him to eat some food. So whenever he passed that way, he would turn in there to eat food. And she said to her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is a holy man of God who is continually passing our way. Let us make a small roof chamber with walls and put there for him a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp, so that whenever he comes to us, he can go in there. One day he came there, and he turned into the chamber and rested there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, What is to be done for her? Gehazi answered, Well, she has no son, and her husband is old. He said, Call her. And when he called her, she stood in the doorway, and he said, At this season, when the time comes round, you shall embrace a son. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The response to the psalm, I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. I will, I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. Through all ages my mouth will proclaim your fidelity. I have declared your mercy is established forever. Your fidelity stands firm as the heavens. 
I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. How blessed the people who know your praise, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your face, who find their joy every day in your name, who make your justice their joyful acclaim. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. For you are the glory of their strength. By your favor it is that our might is exalted. Behold, the Lord is our shield. He is the Holy One of Israel, our King. I will will sing sing forever forever of your your mercies, O Lord. The second reading is taken from the book of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. For we know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, declare the wonderful deeds of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And And with with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his apostles, He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. He who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet because he's a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man, because he is a righteous man, shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives to one of these little ones even a cup of cold water, because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he shall not lose his reward. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The call to discipleship is a call to paradox. If you have any doubts about that, just reread that gospel today. On one level, it seems pretty grim. You have to hate your family. Now, perhaps after many weeks of lockdown, that might be easier than most times, but 
for the most part, this kind of call is disturbing. Is Jesus being serious? Or is he being deliberately provocative? I think it's the latter. I think he's being deliberately provocative because he is taking an extreme situation and asking us to consider whether we would be his disciples in such an extreme situation. Well, you have to make a choice. A choice between family, between interests, between what you like, and the call to follow him. When we talk about the call to discipleship, what do we mean? The problem, I think, is that for 2,000 years, we have lived in a situation where discipleship has changed. It used to be being a member of a marginal sect who were living against the dominant way of thinking of the world they lived in, the Roman Empire. Then, of course, the church became the Roman Empire. And suddenly, we all became part of the establishment. And discipleship became easy. So easy, perhaps, that somewhere we lost our way, perhaps. What's it mean to be a disciple today? To take up one's cross? Well, what is our cross? The cross of being a member of the church, perhaps. Particularly if we imagine that we could be much happier outside of the church. Perhaps if being a member of the church makes us complacent. Notice there are two options. The one is about self-interest. The other may actually be a deeper call to discipleship, a call to challenge what we see as undermining the very call of discipleship that Jesus gives us. What does it mean also to be rewarded? Do we do things because we are promised goods? Well, if that's the case, perhaps many of us are disciples because we are investing in a life-after-death insurance, perhaps. But let's look at the examples of reward that Jesus talks about in today's reading. A prophet's reward. What's that mean? Well, the reward of the prophet is twofold. The reward of the prophet, positively, is knowledge of the will of God. A knowledge that is reached not by easy means, but often by a deep searching for God's will in his or her life. And the other reward is suffering. If you read the stories of the prophets in the Old Testament, most of them come to very unhappy ends. Most of them are rejected by the world around them. Most of them suffer persecution. And some even are killed. Now, perhaps today in a world where the church is still very much part of the establishment, even if it may not have the kind of influence it had a few centuries ago, we may not imagine that that will happen to us. But what happens when we ask the Lord to help us to see where we as church can be truly prophetic? Where we ask the Lord to help us to speak up in areas where the church needs to change, to grow, to renew itself, to be less in tune with the established order that has co-opted it into its establishment. How many of us, I wonder, worry when we see public figures latching on to the church, latching on to religion as a way of justifying their political agenda? And how often, perhaps, does the church not latch on to public figures as a way to get their agenda across? We may need to do that sometime. And maybe there are people outside the church that we must work with. But 
to the end of the day, what are we about? Proclaiming the reign of God. Proclaiming God's justice. Proclaiming that God is concerned about those on the margins. Those for whom a little cup of water might be the only thing they receive that day. And what's the ultimate offer? Death. Death, says St. Paul. We are baptized into Christ's death. If we follow as disciples, we may well come to unhappy end. But the promise of Paul and the promise of Jesus is life. Life lived to the full here and now and life in union with God forever. May we have the courage and the strength to embrace the paradoxical call to discipleship. Let us then together profess our faith that we share with Christians past, present, and future. I believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, earth of all of things, things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified and punished side, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in his glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. On this day, we bring before the Lord our prayers and petitions, our prayers that ask Him to help us to be better disciples. Let us pray for the Church, for Pope Francis and all the cardinals, bishops, priests and religious of the church. We pray for a renewed movement of the Holy Spirit within the church so that we can become missionary disciples. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. hear us. We pray for our country. We pray for our leaders that they will wisely discern what will help bring peace and justice within our nation, policies that will enrich and enhance the lives of all South Africans. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all teachers and students in our country. We pray for the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in all that they do, that they will receive an education in their faith and so become men and women for others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray in silence for our own needs and the needs of those we love. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are dying, for the deceased, the sick, lonely and heartbroken, and all who are suffering. We pray that they will find peace, healing, and comforting in the love of Jesus. We pray that those who have died will find everlasting joy in the Father's kingdom. Lord, hear us. 
Lord, graciously hear us. Loving God, we bring before you these prayers we have spoken. We also bring before you the prayers that we reached out to you from the very depth of our hearts. We make all these prayers in the name of Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. It's in the name of water and wine, we will come to share with one for him who shared our blood. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and your sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just to give you thanks and raise to you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation, and having filled her with life by the power of your spirit, you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord you promised would last for eternity. And so with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, while with all the church, as one voice we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross, 
to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the pastoral sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the Gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis our Pope, Ruti our Archbishop, Duncan his Auxiliary, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles and Martyrs and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As the Lord has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the Lord, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the Church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, 
giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity we may bear fruit that lasts forever. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Remain in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks to God. God.